Breaking news this morning. The Knicks will not get Julius Randle back for a playoff run. He will undergo season-ending surgery on his right shoulder. Our senior insider Adrian Wojnarowski broke the news and is with us now. Woj, how did Julius and the Knicks arrive at this decision? Hey, Malika, ultimately, uh, Julius Randle, you know, in his consultation with, you know, the Knicks doctors, with other specialists, it kept coming back to the same thing, that he was risking further injury, perhaps even lasting injury, on that shoulder if he came back and re-injured it uh, versus getting that procedure done now uh, and being in position to come back, you know, around the start of next season. But certainly, Julius Randle exhausted every avenue to try to figure out a way to come back and play, rejoin this Knicks team that when he and OG Ananobi had played together for that brief window, 12 and two in their 14 games together. And certainly his understanding, you know, that this was a team that had a chance, you know, to make a, a real run in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Uh, but in the end for uh, Julius Randle, uh, despite trying uh, in lots of different ways, exhausting, you know, every avenue yeah. that medically he had to get this procedure and not risk uh, maybe perhaps more significant injury in that dislocated right shoulder. It's admirable in some ways that he wanted to go through every possible avenue in order to return you. And I both know that for many years he was known as an iron man in this league. But well, he did get hurt in January. So why did it wait so why did he wait so long before making this decision? Uh, Malika, essentially to just do what you know we discussed, the idea that if there was a way he could come back, if there was a way that his shoulder could you know sustainably get through you know uh, this season, get through a physical playoff series, multiple series, he wanted to play. And that ultimately it was just not strong enough mm. uh, to be able to withstand. You know how Julius Randle plays. He's a physical player. Uh, and the idea that he could further injure that shoulder, uh, knowing that this is a Nick team, that they can have this group back next season. They could be one of the favorites in the East. Certainly right. they've got to re-sign OG Ananobi this summer. Uh, but it got to a point, I was told, with Julius Randle where if he waited any longer, he was now risking, you know, maybe missing more of next season mm. than he needed to. So they decided finally now get this procedure now. And the hope is, you know, he can be back you know, around the start of the 24-25 season. Right, and that's so important to not just lose a portion of this season, potentially the most important portion of this season, but not next season as well. This is, though, Woj, as you know, such a bummer for Julius Randle. He takes such joy in being out on the floor. And this happened when the Knicks were up by 17 points in a game in January. So Randle posted this on Instagram this morning. He said, the journey is the journey. Just keep going. It is what you think it is with a couple of emojis there. This is NBA Today presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. And this is just, there's no way else to slice it. It's a huge blow for the New York Knicks. This felt like a franchise that was revitalized this season, guys. They had some early successes with the play of Jalen Brunson, Kendrick Perkins, Brian Windhorst, Zach Lowe uh, here with me as well. Brian, I mean, how devastating is this for the Knicks? Well, I think the team had sort of come to terms with this over the last week or two. Mm. They knew that he had stopped really progressing with his rehab. I think it's important for fans to know that timeline that Woj outlined. It wasn't like Julius could have immediately had surgery in January and then been back. Right. He had to go through this. Going through this process left the door open for him to return. But I think what the Knicks now are looking towards is can OG and Anobi get back? Because while this team was absolutely at their best with OG and Julius playing, when OG has played, they've been a terrific team. And OG brings some of the things that Randall uh, is now not going to be able to bring. So if they're able to get OG back, which is you know still on the table, uh, I still think they, there are some matchups that are favorable for the Knicks. And I still think they can have a playoff run. Well, it's about time. I think it's about damn time when it comes down to Julius Randle. I was wondering what was taking him so long because as a guy that had you know four shoulder surgeries, I know how that process goes, and it don't end well when you try to rehab and come back. You have to go and get this thing repaired, and it was the right decision. For him, and I know as a as a player, you want to try to do everything in your power, right? You go see a, go get a, 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 a you a opinion from one doctor, and then you go get an opinion from another doctor, and they both tell you the same thing. But as a player, you like, nah, maybe I could fight through it and, and defeat the odds. But that's not it. But as far as the Knicks, look, 
the organization, the Nick fan base, as the mayor, I'm telling <laughs> the mayor every, in New York yeah, City. Yeah, I'm telling everyone to keep a cool booty. It's okay. It's okay. And I understand the window, like if you look at the window of the opportunity right now for us them to maximize in the Eastern Conference how vulnerable the East look outside the Boston Celtics, you're like, man, we had a shot at it. But you can have a shot at it next year. And also, they have developed a culture that has become eye candy to the rest of the league. Now, I understand we could, Wendy, Malika, Zach, y'all could dive into the first apron, second apron, and all that. I don't really know the logistics behind that. But what I will say is that if you get a disgruntled superstar this upcoming offseason, New York is a great destination for one. But you're already punting to this offseason when this is a team that we were talking about making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, potentially. Yeah, yeah, because, look, let's be real. When I look at the East, they still could make it to the Conference Finals, but the Knicks want to make it to the Finals. And in order for them to get past the Celtics, they need everyone. And even when OG Ananobi gets back, he's not going to be 100%. He's still going to have problems with that elbow. This is I a crusher. It, I love it when you're shaking your head when I say When I nod. You like it when I nod. <laughs> Going forward, you're right. But for this season, I thought the Knicks at full blast could have been the second best team in the mm -hmm. East and the team best positioned to push Boston really hard in a playoff series. There's still a roadmap for them to be really good. They're plus 10 per 100 possessions when Brunson plays and Randall doesn't. You mentioned Ananobi and the two of them plus the rest of the team without Randall is still a good team. But I just don't think the ceiling is quite high enough to push Boston in the playoffs against the best teams. You need as many dudes as possible who can create their own shot from nothing. And Julius Randle can do that. And like Perk said, we don't know what condition OG Ananobi is going to come back in, if he's going to be able to stay healthy, how long he's going to be able to stay healthy, and all of that. So for now, it's a crusher. Long term, the Knicks have turned the page completely. They are in an ideal position going mm -hmm. forward. It just, it stinks. OG Ananobi has been dealing with that elbow issue, that elbow injury. Woj, what more can you tell us on if we can expect him back and in what condition as these guys have brought up? No, exactly. And I, I think, and, and Zach said it, the question is getting OG Ananobi back and being able to have him healthy and keeping him back. He did return for a brief period, you know, after that early February procedure on his elbow and the inflammation, the irritation returned shortly after. What the Knicks are trying to do with OG Ananobi now is to bring him back when he's ready to stay back. You know, certainly looking at the big picture of the postseason, and they don't want to have him in and out of the lineup with this injury. So they're giving this injury time uh, to heal, to get past that inflammation, irritation. Mm. And the hope is still that he can return. And when he returns, guys, uh, that he can stay back and they can uh, count on him being in the lineup and not in and out. And I think bringing him back the first time and then uh, seeing him go out, it gave them a, a sense of uh, how this injury was healing and, and how they would have to move forward with it. I think they learned something from that. And now they're trying to get him back uh, in a way that allows him to remain on the floor and not be in and out of the lineup. Do, do people realize how valuable OG is? I know we do, but do the fan base and, like, you know, people out there in the outside world realize? Well, he's, he's like 15-2 the, and two when he plays. Yeah, he's the second most important player on this Knicks team, and that's including Julius Randle. Like, with Julius Randle, no OG and Anobi, they're, they're a really good team. OG and Anobi puts them into the teams for his title contenders. See, like, that's how much he moves the needle. I agree with you on the ranking of the players because if you're going to have the ball in Jalen Brunson's hands a lot, and my God, is that do good, you want the ball in his hands a lot, a guy with OG and Anobi's skill set, 3 and D and A-plus at both of those things is theoretically, and I think realistically, a little bit more valuable than a guy with Julius Randle's skill set. Right. But I think for this team to really get where they want to go, which as Perk said is conference finals and maybe finals, they need everybody. They can still do some damage in the playoffs if OG comes back. That's how good they are without him. But I just think their ceiling went from here to here, and that's the difference between Boston feeling threatened and not. Right, because right now the Knicks, they currently sit as the, the fifth spot in the Eastern Conference, and there's really just a two-game cushion between them and falling into the play-in tournament, as you can see here. Tonight's game against the Kings, it's going to be a big one. But, Perk, you know what's also huge? What's that? Caitlin Clark in Cleveland preparing to face UConn in the Final Four.